In this video, we invite you to learn how the McHale Group at Washington State University is harnessing the power of sunlight using light harvesting molecules similar to those found in nature. Hello, I'm Jeannie McHale. With support from the National Science Foundation, we're uncovering molecular details of photo-induced electron transfer, the same kind of electron transfer that powers photosynthesis. Everybody knows why grass is green. The answer is, of course, chlorophyll, the molecular workhorse of photosynthesis. But did you know that only a small percentage of chlorophyll molecules in plants actually participate directly in the electron transfer process that converts sunlight into fuel? The rest of the chlorophylls just collect energy from the sun and pass it on to the business end of the photosynthetic apparatus where electron transfer takes place. If we could understand this process better, we could copy it in a solar cell and that would increase the efficiency by collecting a broader range of wavelengths from the sun. Collecting a broad range of wavelengths is a tough job for a single molecule, so nature uses assemblies of molecules called light harvesting aggregates in order to collect more energy from the solar spectrum. In our lab, we're using spectroscopy to understand how the optical properties of synthetic light harvesting aggregates depend on their nanoscale structure. The subject of our perspective is the light harvesting aggregate of tetrasulfonatophenylporphyrin, or TSPP for short. Hello, I'm Chris Rich, and I'm a fourth year physical chemistry graduate student in the McHale Lab. And I'm using resonance Raman spectroscopy to test models for the internal structure of TSPP aggregates. Our studies show this aggregate is more structurally complex than previously thought, and that there's a hierarchy to assembly of the TSPP molecules. It turns out that the aggregate of TSPP shares some similarity to light harvesting complexes in photosynthetic bacteria. First, we recognize that the first step to forming an aggregate is for the TSPP molecule to adopt a saddle geometry, which it does in acidic solution. This gives the molecules a driving force to assemble first into cyclic aggregates, maybe containing 12 or 16 molecules, held together by electrostatic forces. These cyclic enmers then form helical nanotubes with excited states that are delocalized over a larger number of molecules. Since water is required for aggregation of TSPP to happen, we hypothesize that these cyclic units are held together by water-mediated hydrogen bonds. I tested this hypothesis by preparing the aggregate in deuterated water using DCL instead of HCL as the acid that initiates aggregation. We found surprising changes in the resonance Raman spectra that suggest the water molecules are not only the glue that holds the nanotubes together, they also help them to localize the energy of the excited state, which is important to know if you want to control the flow of energy to the part of a solar device where electron transfer takes place, like in a photosynthetic organism. Another aspect of our work is to use light harvesting pigments from plants as sensitizers for titanium dioxide-based solar cells. Hi, I'm Kenny Mercado, material science graduate student in the McHale Lab. And I'm Martha Cuevas Ramos, an undergraduate research assistant. We're extracting beryllium pigment from plants such as beets and amaranth. These dyes act as sunscreens for plants, and they are also antioxidants, so they are already tuned to collect solar energy and transfer electrons. One of these plant pigments, called betanin, has a very high yield for converting photons to electrons higher than what you get from a conventional dye in this type of solar cell. The absorption spectrum of this dye when it's absorbed in titanium dioxide in a solar cell is much better than when it's dissolved in water. This is a good thing because more wavelengths can be collected, but we need to understand how this change in the spectrum is happening. It could be because the betanin molecules self-assemble on the surface of the semiconductor. If we can understand this assembly and control it, then these plant pigments will be really useful in converting sunlight into electricity. We're glad to have this chance to talk about our work in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. The Journal of Physical Chemistry is a great resource for many researchers who are trying to solve important energy and environmental problems. Thanks for watching our video.